Hello folks, <coughs> fellow YouTubers and friends. Well, we're back at it again. Uh, last video I made had the 95-pound uh, pendulum swinging at uh, center pivot point to center of weight on pendulum was 42 inches. And we're going to try to leave it there for the time being. Uh, in doing so, I said I'm trying to build an escapement that will not bind up, and that's almost impossible. If the, you get the swing wrong, and the release point wrong it can bind up and part of it was the thickness of this part right here being so when the bar came across it would come over well this had thickness to it and my tip had thickness to it so at any one point it could reach a point and if that didn't quite pass by and this come up if it was right there it would hang up and and try to push this up as it come back and it bent a few things, which we straightened them out. Uh, this, I guess part of the secret is just don't get the weight wrong. If you get it too low by having this angle here, if you get the weight not enough, it goes around and being curved in here, it pushes that back and, and rides up on it, okay? But if it goes by, then this comes up and the other one on the other side comes around. Uh, I'm not sure if I can explain this where you can really understand what I'm talking about. It, the thing is to get more weight than you need to push it. And all that will do is actually cause the pendulum to go a little bit higher, which is great. Uh, we've got this design right now. It cuts free at about, uh, uh, from bottom dead center up, uh, cuts loose at about 80, somewhere between 80 and 85 degrees, not quite 85, and a little over 80. But by overpowering it, it'll throw it higher than it will actually release and that's good in this case okay uh what happened these bent we're gonna uh take these off and uh well we've already straightened them out and redone them and we've polished them a little better so this is a much slicker surface uh because they bent uh we're gonna take them off again and reheat them or rather uh heat treat them and hopefully make them a little harder so that uh, the actual rubbing won't wear as much uh, in the old one, the other one, the one that bent, we had all thread rod, half inch. Of course, you know, because of cutting the threads, it's nowhere near half inch rod, more like three eighths. So what we've done is we've replaced the axle itself with uh, a full five eighths rod. We uh, put the rod on, on the, uh, uh, the metal lathe and turned it down so that our half inch bearings will fit right on it. The half inch will be uh, stronger here because of the shortness right here. Much, much stronger than the half inch all thread rod. So maybe it'll handle the uh, 95 pound pendulum. I'm thinking we're gonna bump it to uh, about 110. I've, I've got enough room for that much more lead in it. Now, what we did here, because we're using slick rod, we, before we had all thread in there, we could turn the nuts and adjust it and move these in and out to tweak it out and get it running right. So what we did with the slick rod, being 5 eighths, we took some 5 eighths nuts, put them in the vise on the drill press and drilled them out exactly 5 eighths an inch where they, they just barely slide on there real nice. Then we took this side and drilled a hole perfect for uh, drilling and tapping for a number 10, uh, 32 thread per inch, Three, uh, five sixteenths long set screw and therefore we that way we can still slide this back and forth the the bars the push bars and get it tweak that thing out the bottom uh it doesn't have that much strain on it so we left it uh half inch all thread rod so we can move them together and that way keep everything straight uh i don't don't know if anybody's really interested in what we're doing here but uh i just thought i'd show this and see how it's going now one thing oh oh i'm sorry right here if you look right here these nuts are a little bit too big and and they overshadow this part so we're going to take it apart mark these take it apart and grind these down to where they're the same thickness as the metal here on this it shouldn't weaken it hardly any at all and that maybe that'll work now the as this is a push point for as the the wheel itself by the way well uh, we took the wheel and angled these just a little bit I don't know if you can see that angle on there okay 
We angle them. We're going to take a torch and heat these up cherry red and dip them in ice water. Try to harden them up a little bit and then take some uh, 400 or 600 grit sandpaper and just rub the heck out of it and, and polish them up a little bit too. But uh, now as this paddle wheel comes around and pushes right here, when this from the center of the axle to this tip is an inch and a half. At 42 inches on the pendulum, that is a 28 to 1 ratio and a 95 pound pendulum, I've already done the math on this, the actual pressure point, if that paddle wheel does not go by that point and the, the pendulum starts coming down and hooks on the bottom of that, that blade, you're looking at 2,660 pounds. That's right folks, a 95 pound pendulum exerts a force right here if it get, catches wrong of 2,660 pounds. Now we bump that thing up to a, 110 pounds we're looking at 3,080 pounds so therefore I can't in the future when I'm doing this I can't even get close I've got to be at, at least 10 20 pounds on driving force on the the uh, cables more than I need I'm going to have to because I, I can't be taking this thing apart every two or three times I run it and fixing it just simply because I get it try to get it really close. Now, if we use the exact same apparatus, sizes and all, to drive the, the big pendulum outside, which is 512 pounds and swinging at six and a half feet, if it hangs up, my God, you're looking at 26 thousand six hundred and twenty four pound force that that'll be I, I, I'm glad we're doing this on the small one in here okay I just thought I'd uh, bring that up to people and see what we're doing uh, we're just a couple hours away from getting this totally ready to go back on the machine and and before being fired up we're going to take the uh, the bicycle wheel sprockets and and uh, ratchets and move them around like I said in the last video and put them on the uh, actual power transfer bar because uh, a couple of times the uh, uh, pendulum pivot point moving up and down the sprocket on the top was moving with it and changing the angle however over here the sprocket with the bicycle wheel and, and ratchet it wasn't so it, a couple of times it, it tipped a little bit too much and the chain came off so we're gonna take that and move it over back here and put the uh, sprocket and uh, ratchet on the uh, actual uh, power transfer bar therefore when the when they pivot they'll pivot on the same angle together and uh, therefore the sprockets will remain perfectly in line the cable can take the angle but the sp sprocket chain cannot okay enough for that for now and uh, I'm not even going to bother showing this anymore because I mean, you see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead today and take it completely apart, redo all this, get it all ready to go, and uh, get it back on the machine. Then I'm going to uh, start working on the uh, sprocket and, and chain and, and relocating it. All right. Have a good day, folks. Bye-bye.